Hey guys, what's going on? Troy at Mountain Man Treasure here, and today, a bit of a follow-up. Mountain Man. Mountain Man. Treasures. Welcome into the channel, guys. My name is Troy. I'm a part-time reseller based out of Montana. That means I have a day job. I have a very early morning job. I work at a radio station in the early morning hours into the afternoon, and then after that is when I go to garage sales, estate sales, thrift stores, places like that, and try to find things that I think are priced low. I buy them, and then I sell them or resell them online for a profit, and I do that primarily on eBay. And uh, the last video that we did here uh, turned out to be a little more controversial than I guess I expected. A lot of you giving me feedback on that one. I thought, you know what, Let, let's address some of that. And uh, you know what, I just finally got, uh, for those of you that were following on Instagram, the Peloton saga, I actually finally got it. It took, uh, it, it took me tracking down some numbers and it was a whole big thing. No reason to get into it here, but their customer service through their vendor that actually delivers is terrible. The logistics are awful. It's a bad setup, but I finally forced the issue. We made it happen. We found one good person there at the delivery place that came and delivered it on his own and uh, got it to us. And I actually just finished our ride. I haven't even changed. I thought, you know what? The ride's done. Let's go do the video. We've had it for two days. I've done two rides. So, you know what? I feel really good about that. I just got to work, as I talked about before, work on getting in better shape. You know, too many of us in reselling, it's a, it's a little bit of an isolating thing. You know, we're by ourselves a lot of time. Even if we're doing it part-time, we're spending that time by ourselves. And it's very easy to sit there and snack on things while you're working. And it, it, it's, it's easy to neglect your health. And I've been doing that for a while now. And I, I got to get better about it. So it, those of you that are on uh, on the Peloton thing, I, I got to figure out how to do it. I think we can. you can add friends and add. I, I don't know how to do it. I, I'll, I'll figure it out. But send me a message, uh, Instagram or uh, through email. Or if you want, just leave it down below in the comments with, uh, with your, I, I guess it's your username or whatever on there. And uh, I, I can add you. Or if you want to look me up, I think it's underscore mountain man underscore. If, if you want to find me. Maybe that's easier, and we can encourage each other as we work to get in better shape. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. But then I, I do want to address the last video. If you want, I'll, I'll put it up here if you didn't see it. But going back, I was talking at the end about how I prefer when I get packages, and I, I guess when I send them out, to use filler inboxes that is meant to be filler. You know, specifically, I was talking about used wrapping paper as filler, which I, I don't, I, I don't like. I see that as trash and people are sending me their trash when they send me that. And uh, some people, I guess, took offense at that and said, you know what? I've been doing that for a long time. And I hear that, right? I, I get that. I, I do want to point out though, as I said before, I'll say it again. You have to run your business the way that you see fit. You have to run your company the way that it makes sense for you to run your company. The way I do things might not be best for you. The, the way you do things might not be best for the next person. And that's how it works. And that's okay, right? You, you just have to find your way to what your system is. And, and, and when I share information, I share information that I hope is helpful to people and that I think, at least for me, is the best way. Will that be best for you? I don't know. It, it, it might not be. But at least it gives you the option to consider it and think, well, maybe this is something that I can apply. Or maybe this is something where I can take a, a piece of that and apply it. And I, I guess what I would say is, at the very, very least, consider what you're doing if you're using recycled goods. Now, boxes... I, I'm down with that. And I think maybe I didn't make that super clear. A lot of people were talking about how they reuse boxes. And you know what? I reuse boxes as well. Not a ton. I use a lot of free USPS boxes. And then I buy a lot of my boxes. But I do, if I get something in the mail and it comes to me and the box is doesn't look like, you know, it looks like I just picked it up off of the store shelf. It's still in great shape. I'll keep it. If I get something from uh, from Amazon and the box isn't all beat up, a lot of times those boxes aren't necessarily that thick and they're not great. I'll keep that if it's good. Sometimes the boxes that the USPS stuff comes in or that my bubble wrap comes in, they're larger. Sometimes I'll keep those. You know, so I I, I will keep some boxes and reuse some boxes. Where where I don't want to mess with is going and finding boxes 
out of dumpsters or recycling bins or whatever. And some of you do that. Uh, for me, there, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. Uh, as long as the box is in good shape, I, I'm okay with that. But I don't like spending that time. I, I'd rather spend that time doing something else. And I like having all my stuff relatively uniform, broken down in a pile. And it, it's just easier for me. But again, if that works for you, do that. And, and a lot of people have systems. Fake Farmer Mark, uh, he's a friend of mine, friend of the channel. He's actually here local to me in town. Uh, ran across each other at uh, Goodwill today, in fact. And he scooped up a fantastic logo athletic uh, Phoenix Suns hat right in front of me, right in front of me. He says, you ought to check out the hats. They're great. And there's, there's maybe some that you would like over there. And he'd already been through it. I started at one side and it caught his eye on the other side. He scooped it up, sold that thing day of. I, I think, I don't know how much it was, Mark, probably two, three, four bucks and sold it for $69.99 today, same day. A fantastic score, Mark. That was awesome. I'm thrilled that uh, that, that you got it. If I wasn't going to get it, I'm, I'm glad that you got it. But I mean, I was 30 seconds too slow. Anyway, Mark picks up some of his boxes. There's actually a place just a couple blocks away from our post office that we both go to. And uh, they have boxes that Mark likes to use that are tossed out in that place all the time. And so he goes, he scoops those up, and he uses those. It's part of his schedule. It's right there by the post office. And so he really doesn't spend that much time doing it. If that's a system that you have, or you have a system like that, or friends and family you know, know that you do this, and they save them, they bring them to you, that's one thing, right? And, that, and that's great, you know, and, and, and use those. Boxes, like I said, for the most part, I'm good with that. It's just the stuff that goes inside, and most of it is perception. Uh, most of it is what do I want my customer to see when they open up that box? And I've been accused multiple times accurately of overpacking stuff. I will put bubble wrap around stuff that doesn't necessarily need bubble wrap around it because I like it to get to the customer and them to go, whoa, right? And a lot of my feedback is it got here really fast. It is exactly as was described and it was packed well. Those, those are one, two, and three. And I get a lot of feedback that way. So I keep doing that. And I, I just think that's a way to build feedback, to look professional. I have a business and I want it to look like a business. Now, if, if you want to send recycled material in there, it, it, it's not for me, but I, I think it's something that you can do. A lot of people do that. I, I think the balance, I'm just guessing, was probably 60-40 or so uh, that don't on my side to, to that do. I think that's where it was. It might hedge even closer to 50-50, honestly. I, I think for those that do that, it's key to put that in your listings. And then maybe there are stickers that you can get that you slap on the box and say, hey, we use recycled materials. Just want to let you know that's why this is in here. I think that's great. And then people know, right? They know that you're not just being lazy. You're not just being cheap. You're actually doing it for a purpose. I, I think that I, I think that would mitigate a lot of my issues. If I saw that on the box, cool. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm down with that. I, I think that's a great step to take. I, I do think that it's also worth recognizing that at least 50% of your customers, if, you know, this anecdotal, not really a poll, but the reaction to my video, if it's any indication, at least 50% of your customers are going to get that and go, Ooh, I don't, I don't know about this. That's worth thinking about, right? I mean, it, do you want to be turning off 50% of your customers? But once again, it's it's worth repeating. You got to do ultimately what works for you. You know, that's what's great about this business is it's not cookie cutter. You know, you can do whatever fits your business model. And in this instance, the same rule applies. So while these are the things that I suggest, take some of it, take all of it, take none of it. Do whatever works for you. In other reseller news of the day, uh, one thing I wanted to touch on is returns, especially for newer resellers. They may see a return request and it just drives them crazy. Uh, maybe they don't understand why it's coming. That's what happens for us more veteran seasoned sellers as well. It's just that I think we realize it's going to happen. And you know what? And it's going to happen a lot right now. It, it always happens. You sell more during the fourth quarter ahead of Christmas. And then after Christmas, you tend to get more returns. It, it, it just happens. Um, I've got three returns pending right now. And I don't think I'll see two of them back. And that's something that you're going to see a lot of times. A lot of times people are fishing for a partial refund. 
And so I would suggest for most things, have them, have them send it back. Now, if it's a, if it's a mistake that you made and it's a $9.99 free shipping item, I, a lot of times I go, you know what? Save yourself the hassle of the return. Here's your refund. Because to me, it, it, it's not worth it, right? It, as long as the customer, you can tell that the problem was your fault or the customer's being honest about whatever's wrong. I've got no problem doing that, right? But if it's any other instance, if you have even a hint that the person is just trying to see if you will give them some kind of partial refund or if they can get an item for free, force them to return it. Make them go through the process and return it. I've, like I said, I've got I've got three pending right now. One of them is, uh, I, I think I've got a, another maybe a week-ish or so to, to wait that one out. It is a Halloween decoration that I sent actually to, I think, Brazil. And the uh, it, it's a little I don't know it's a, it's about that tall it's a it's a wall hanger motion activated you go past it and it makes music and laughs and you know that's a Halloween thing the uh, the return reason is doesn't fit I, I I don't know how that applies doesn't fit um, and then in the comments it says the, the item is different than what's pictured no it's not. It's a gemmy, jemmy, whichever one it is. It It is what it is. It might be smaller than, I guess, what you thought it was, or you didn't like it once you got it, whatever it is. I don't take international returns as a rule, as long as they claim, as long as it's a remorse claim, and I actually made sure that I got with uh, uh, eBay for Business on Facebook, and I confirmed this, and they said, yep, that's a remorse reason. So they're going to have to foot the bill for the return. Nobody's going to pay to send that back from Brazil to me. And so they started the return, but as long as they don't continue with it, as long as they don't print a label and start the process going back, it's going to fall off once like 30 days or whatever elapse. So I got to sit there and look at it for a while, but that's going to fall off. No problem. I've got another one that uh, is from a couple weeks ago, and I sent out a spider ladies winter jacket. Uh, size 12, right? And so she starts a return and says, doesn't fit. And then says uh, in her comments that this is too small. It must be a child's size 12, not a lady's size 12, because it doesn't fit. Well, and, and what, it, oh, and the, the, the reason it was uh, too small, do, um, doesn't match photos or description is what it was. <sighs> In one of the photos, the entire photo is the tag that says lady size 12. It's right there. I mean, unless Spider misprinted their entire label, maybe you're just bigger than you thought you were, right? I don't think I'm ever going to see that one back either. They haven't started the return, so I don't anticipate that I'm going to see that. It's never going to come back. Now, number three, that is apparently coming back because they started the return and it actually says, you know, this item has started tracking. You can see when there's a return, when the the buyer actually starts the process, prints the label, puts it in the mail, all of that. But this might be, you know, both of those weird reasons, this might be the weirder reason of them, actually. It's a, uh, I, th I think we mentioned it before, it might have been featured on a on a thrift haul. It's a plush scorpion. I, I think we had that on there. It's it's like this big, It's it's pretty big. And it's from Wild Republic, which is a pretty big brand for making, you know, it, they're sold in gift shops and stuff a lot at zoos, museums, stuff like that. Not super high end, but not, uh, it, it's not the claw machine, right? I mean, it's just a, it's a plush stuffed animal. And uh, I, I thought a plush scorpion was cool. Somebody bought it. And the, the reason that they gave for returning it is they said that the item that they received was not the item that was pictured and that the the quality of material is not good I, I really don't know what that means i mean it's i saw nothing wrong with it it's not a chintzy product what we'll see what i get back you know every once in a while they'll send back something that wasn't what you sent them right we'll see what i get back but if i get it back i will refund them mine it i'm not paying the shipping you know, I'm I'm not going to do that, but I will refund them the initial purchase price and relist it and move on. You know, it returns, returns suck, you know, but it, it's part of the business. You don't want to get a lot of them. You want to make sure that you keep 
that return percentage low. I don't get a ton. You know, it's like 1% a month, you know, something like that. But it happens. It's part of business. And right now, you're going to see more of that around the holidays. People not getting something they didn't want or they got something to realize it's not going to work as a gift whatever. I mean, you, you see the lines at the stores, people bringing stuff back. Same thing happens with online retailers. You're, you're going to get some items back. Don't take it personally. Just take it. Move on. And in the last piece here, I wanted to talk about the removal of negative feedback. Now, a lot of times we get feedback that there's nothing that eBay will do. You know, you'll get the, you'll get an unjust negative feedback and sometimes you'll contact eBay for business on Facebook, which I maintain is the best way to get something done. And you will get back, well, you know, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that because this is the customer's opinion. Even if it, it it's it's demonstrably false, you know, sometimes you'll just get that and, and you're stuck with it. But there are times when... Customers will leave you a negative feedback for a reason that is beyond your control, and it's almost a guarantee that eBay is going to back you and get rid of that. And that's what I had here recently. I actually had one of my hair dyes got sent to Israel, and then I got a message from this customer saying, hey, my item says that it's been delivered to my country. I've been checking with my post office for two of the last three days, and it's not here I want my money back or a replacement. So I got on, I checked the tracking, and indeed it had reached Israel, but it was in like the, it had passed through customs, but it was still being sorted. So it hadn't actually been delivered yet. So I got a hold of him and said, hey, look, this has not actually been delivered to you yet. Yes, it's in your country, but it's not been delivered. So wait for it because it, it should be showing up soon. Got another email. Yeah, but I've been calling for two or three days and it's not here. I want a replacement or my money back. I don't know what they weren't understanding. The next day I checked and it had been delivered that morning at like 10 something that morning. So I messaged them and said, hey, it has now been delivered. Uh, now it's showing as delivered at, at 10, 16 this morning, whatever it was. And so now you might check with your post office. And they write back, and some of it was copy-paste because it was the same exact stuff at the bottom. Again, I've been checking with my post office for two of the last three days. But, you know, I, I don't know if it's a, a scammer thing. I don't I, I don't think so. I, I feel like it's somebody that's just not understanding what's going on. I suggested to them, I said, hey, check with your post office. Sometimes here in the States, things are marked delivered, and it shows up actually the next day or even two days later. You know, I, I was trying to encourage patients and saying, hey, look, it just said it got there this morning. So you calling the last few days doesn't matter because it wasn't there yet. It's there now. Uh, and if it's not there, give it a couple of days. And sorry, bumped the camera there. So then they say, well, if it's not there tomorrow, will you refund my money? Or it was either that or they said, will you uh, send me a replacement product? So I replied to them and said, no, that's not something we can do. It says delivered. Unfortunately, once it's in the hands of your postal system, there's nothing I can do about it. If you'd like to purchase another one, I will certainly send it on to you as soon as payment is processed. Didn't hear back from them. And then later that night, Got, uh, well, I, th I think I screen grabbed it. If I did, we'll put it up here. Got, got a negative feedback from them saying, hey, this, I didn't get my thing. They kept my money, you know, whatever. Interesting to note, actually, I, I forgot to mention in their previous emails, the messages through the, the, the eBay system, they would say, please provide me my money back or a replacement item so I can leave you positive feedback. And they said that multiple times. And that it was sort of hedging on what uh, eBay calls feedback extortion. And they don't like that. They don't like when buyers say, hey, do this, or I'm going to leave you bad feedback. If somebody does that and eBay says, yep, that's feedback extortion, they will take off whatever negative feedback they leave. They can't essentially bribe you in order to get something so that they leave you positive or don't leave you negative. eBay's not going to stand for that. eBay will take that off. The other thing that eBay will protect you for on a negative feedback is if it's something where, like in this instance, it says delivered. Tracking shows it went from my house, sent on time to their house, got there on time, and it's delivered. I, I completed my, my whole part of this process, and then the postal system did their whole part, and it's delivered. At that point, you're done. You're clear, okay? 
So if they leave feedback like this person did and said, hey, they took my item and didn't give me my money in terms of the postal system, they believe that it's there. And so I sent a message to eBay for business and I explained to them this whole thing, this whole saga. This is what they've said. This is what I tried to help them with. And ultimately the tracking shows that it's been delivered and I don't know what more I can do to help them, but they've left me negative feedback and I would appreciate if you would please remove that. I didn't ask them if they would. I said, I would appreciate you removing that because I know that that's something that they will do. That's something and a reason because there was a little bit of feedback extortion. And then ultimately they said, hey, I didn't get my product. Well, tracking says you did. Well, I'm at 99.9 .9 because I have one negative feedback on there that I knew eBay wasn't going to take off. Um, and so I left it. Uh, it. Whatever. It's fine. But this one, I, I, I didn't deserve and I knew eBay would take off. So I was sitting at 99.8 for a while, but it took about, I don't think it was a full 24 hours, but I, I sat there with a, a recent negative on there for a little bit, which is frustrating, but then magically popped off, right? It, it, it just was gone. And then a little bit later, got the message from eBay saying, hey, thanks for letting us know about this. We've gone ahead and removed that feedback. Have a good day, right? And, and they will do that in an in instance like this pretty much every time. So you're not going to get all of your negative feedbacks removed, but feedback extortion, or if the item shows delivered and they complain about it not getting there, and that's why they leave the negative feedback, eBay will take those off. So that's what I got for you today, guys. A little bit more reseller 101. I think we've got some garage sale footage that I'm going to dig into and maybe we'll kick off 2022 with a garage sale video. I don't have a ton left over because I put out so many videos in this last year that for the most part, I shared with you the garage sale video that was worth sharing. Um, but I, I think I might have one or two more that we can cobble together a video out of. And so maybe that coming up here pretty soon, hit that bell notification underneath that will let you know when we put new videos up. It'll also let you know when we're going live and we haven't done that a lot this year. I just kind of needed a break. I think some lives are going to be coming back in 2022, but we're going to, I think, end 2021 with uh, at least a short life. Uh, I, I don't have a time set yet. I've got to figure out what's going on with the family, but I think we're going to do a live coming up later tonight. So if you have that bell clicked, that'll let you know when that happens. And, and so you don't miss it. And there's no real topic. It's just going to be a conversation with you guys. We'll answer some questions and uh, see what's going on with you guys on New Year's Eve. If you're just hanging out at the house, being boring like us. So I appreciate it. If, uh, if you hit the bell, you might as well hit the subscribe button as well. Hit that thumb on your way out. That helps me out a ton. And hopefully we'll see you later tonight. <laughs>